Hi again, it's just us. Hi. Today we'd like to show you some of the upgrades we made to the RV. Mostly him. So our two years that we were in North Carolina, we spent doing all these upgrades. So we're hoping this is helpful to you, some of the things we've done. Or better yet, you can turn around and give us some better ideas. And how things should work. Uh, sometimes we put things together and we're finding that it's just not working it for us at all in that. So, yeah, we would take any helpful hints that you have. So, thank you for um, joining us and enjoy the show. Here we go. Just a needy bitty bitty bought a couple on the road driving at Harvey. No place special to roam Not looking for a home Won't you come along with us? We are our place travel We put a soft start on the AC Once you get the cover off Which is just four screws, four bolts Right in here I put the soft start. You take off this plate right here. And everything you need to do to hook up this soft start on this AC is inside this cover. And it has this number on here. And there's a little number down here, 1976136. That's you go on their website and um, and you put in the manufacturer in mind it's a Coleman Mac and you put in this number and it'll, they'll give you instructions on how to do this they're very good instructions they'll walk you through it step by step it's just a matter of connecting a couple of different wires here and there and, and this is supposed to use less amps when you start your start your air conditioner now when we're like mooch docking or something like that we can plug in the, a regular 20 amp outlet and run our air conditioner so that's the benefit of that and I mounted to here, there's a double face tape you can use and there's also screws they give you to use. I put the double face tape on and then I put one screw in it here just to secure it and make sure the double face tape doesn't uh, weaken or make it come down. So very simple installation. We put in vent covers on three of the vents. We went over all the joints with this tape, this roofing tape, this membrane. And to be honest with you, I'm really not sure if this is such a great idea because it's, they say you're supposed to um, keep you from having to maintain all your caulking and everything uh, all the time, but and it's supposed to last lots of years, but the truth is I'm not really sure. I kind of like being able to keep an eye on, uh, on the caulking. For some reason, if water happened to get up underneath here or something, uh, I wouldn't know, wouldn't be able to watch it or know where it came from. I'd pretty much ruin my roof if I ever did have to replace it or anything. I replaced the Ford factory stabilizer bars with uh, Hellwig stabilizer bars, both front and rear. I did them both. Um, the only thing was with these, there's plenty of videos on YouTube to show you how it's done. It's also a very simple job. The only problem I found with the videos is uh, these two bolts here. There's a bolt here and a bolt right there behind it. The torque values, nobody, Hellwig doesn't give them to you. And nobody in, on the internet, uh, on the YouTube channels, tells you what the torques are. So the torque on this one's 111. The torque on the back one here is 18. And a lot of people have problems. They over torque this and it gets stripped out. And then you got to basically drill it out and get in there and put a nut and a bolt on it. It's a real pain. But it's, it's pretty obvious to me that this one's holding it up and the other one's just basically keeping it straight. So there's a big difference in the torques on these. And that's why people are having trouble with them. But other than that, real simple job. You got the two bolts here. You got a bolt. Let's see if I can get to it here. Bolt back here. And uh, take the old one out and put in the new one. 
the back one is pretty much as easy uh, basically this bolt here and there's two bolts back here so this whole bar stabilizer bar comes out replace the old one the only issue I had with this one is Helwig sent the wrong these these come with the kit these brackets here Hel Helwig sent the wrong ones uh, it was pretty obvious right away I called them up on the phone and in the next two days they had the right one sent out so they they knew the problem before I even called them up when I talked to the guy so they replaced it right away and that's the only issue I had with that this is the exhaust for the generator but why this wall is open all this exhaust is just coming up as far as I'm concerned it's coming up into the RV we can actually smell it when the when the thing when the art when the generator is running and the wall is open we can smell that exhaust coming in so I made this up with just a, a bunch of uh, pipes from went to the auto parts store and got some uh, muffler reducers and stuff like that and we just made this little extension and just slide on there just to keep it keep the exhaust from coming up into the RV The RV has this trim piece that goes all the way around the RV. It's the joint where the uh, sidewalls meet the roof. Underneath this vinyl insert is all the screws that hold it all together. Well, we bought this thing. It had a white, this vinyl insert was white. And after the first year we had it, it was all cracking and coming off and everything else. And it, so it had to be replaced. So we replaced it with this color because we they have several colors. Uh, this color is called grape. Replace it with this color and you'll see it goes all the way around the whole RV. As you can see it goes all the way down the whole length of the whole thing, the whole RV on both sides. And then also all the way down the back. All this was replaced. Uh, we had to replace because it was just deteriorating so quickly. Here are stickers. This used to say Quantum across there. A company called Etsy made these up for us. So we just took, took off the Quantum. We didn't use any chemicals or anything. Um, we just peeled them off. We also put one on the back. As you can see, there's the one on the back. Our place travels, our YouTube channel, and our website. And again, that said Quantum across it. And we took that off. Peel that right off and put on our place travels. All these spots where things are venting out, like this is the vent for the water heater. We cover them up with these screens to keep the bugs and stuff out. There's two over here. This one's the furnace, and this uh, you can see them under here. There's like a screen. This, this is the vent for the refrigerator. So we put, you know, we have to get them. That's fine. You can see we put covered up all these holes and bugs and stuff don't go in and all these vents. And then here we put our map on. And we've got a few states on there, but we're working on it. As the videos proceed, you'll see all them get filled in. And then we put a hook here just for all the little plaques. We have a bunch of plaques that we just hang out there, seasonal plaques. So This is the Guta tire pressure monitoring system. What this does, it uh, monitors the tires, the pressure in the tires, and the temperature of the tires. So if there's any issue with the tires, hopefully we can find out before there's a serious issue with the tires. And these are the sensors for the tire pressure monitoring system. Every single tire has one, and we have them on the tow dolly, and we have them on the, on the back wheels of the car. The front wheels are sitting up on the tow dolly, so we don't need them on them. So uh, we have what a total of uh, 10, 10 of these uh, sensors. Every time we set up camp, we put this cover over the windshield. Oh, and we made these. These are actually uh, uh, copper plumbing plumbing insulation covers that we bought at the, at the, at the hardware store. We use these to 
just to cover up the windshield wipers. Keep, and we also use uh, that uh, 3L3. We put a little of that in there, and that keeps the rubber on the windshield wipers soft. So not only it keeps the sun off the windshield wipers and keeps them from drying up, and it also we put the, with the 3L3 helps soften them up a little bit also. So these are just little protectors that we put on the windshield wipers. And we have covers for the tires. All the tires have covers on them. And you just wrap them around, and if you want, you can clip them in the back. Sometimes we clip them in the back, depending on if it's really windy or not. So every time we set up camp, we put them over the tires, and that keeps the sun from drying out the tires. So every time we park for more than a day or two, we make sure we put them on. We put a... Uh, thermal barrier underneath the mat here. We have to take the mat off, uh, take this step, this trim piece off of the step. We took all the seats out. We took the door panels off the door. We put Kilomat uh, thermal barrier under there. It helps the sound and the uh, temperature in the cab. Does, it made the big difference because this thing was pretty loud inside. So we put that on and it's still loud but it's not near as loud. We can actually hear ourselves talk now when we have a conversation. So um, that's what we did there, under there. And all the windows we made, uh, this reflectix material, it's an insulation. It has a very low R value, but it reflects the sun. So when the sun's out on that side of the RV, it's, it makes a big difference. The sun coming in makes everything hot here. So we put this reflectix. We have one made for every window. It's all we do is just slide it up in there and close the curtain. And that holds it in there. And it, it keeps things a lot cooler in here. Everywhere on this RV that we found an open spot or an empty space, we just filled it with insulation. Where we had limited space that we didn't want to take up any space, like in cabinets or closets, we used reflectix and put it up against the ceiling and the outer walls. Where we had a little more space where we could spare, we put in foam board, one inch foam board insulation. This board right here, we took off a couple screws in there, that's all. We took the hinges off underneath the board like a two inch space under there. It's all they had for insulation was uh, just a couple of pieces of foam just thrown in there. And I think it was more to, for support than insulation. So we took, took the board off and filled that whole thing with insulation. This here is the original curtain that came with the RV. And these get tucked in the back when we're camped washing machine stuff gets stored up here. My wife bought this material to make like a curtain here to hide everything and then these curtains hide the upper and it, it gives the whole RV a, a, like it gives it a takes away from that vehicle look RV look and kind of makes it a little more homey with these curtains here so we kind of like that effect. Just a little simple something that she did there just to cover up the front and all the stuff that we store up there while we're camped. As we're traveling, this is all open, so when people walk by here, as the RV's rocking, there's a tendency to want to fall this way, and we're, it's a fear thing, kind of thinking you're going to fall mm -hmm. down the hole. I made this cover, and I actually put insulation on it. So, yeah, we glued it to it and painted it and everything to match, and this is just floor tile. It matches pretty close to our tile. So we put this in here because also not just to cover the to hole from people falling in but this is under these steps is all open you're open to the to the ground so there's because the batteries in there yeah because the batteries are all in underneath here so if it gets a little cold outside there's a lot of cold air that comes up so this also serves to help insulate that so we put this cover on there and that way when people are walking through here they don't have to worry about falling down a hole and we just store this it's real simple. There's a little gap back here. We just store it right back in here. And it has this little home. We also put the shoe racks on there. And if you come in from the outside door, it'll be an, you'll see that it's an R. Right. And we put the inverter down here. So let me take this off and get a better view of it.
So this is actually wired into the batteries, which are right on the other side over here. Under this step is where the batteries are. So the inverter needs to be close to the battery so that there's a hole back here. The wires go down and connect to the batteries. This wire here runs under the RV through the same hole down underneath the RV and goes all the way back up to the switch under the bed. They brought that up through a hole under the RV through a hole to that switch. And that switch switches, if the inverter is turned on, it, it automatically switches to inverter power. If the inverter is off, it automatically switches to either generator or shore power, whichever is on. Underneath the bed, we have a whole compartment under there. Okay, you can see. Under this compartment is where our water tank is. But what I did is I put I put in this extra switch for the inverter. So they have the switch here that the manufacturer put in. So this switches it from shore power to generator power. And I added this other switch that switches it from, from the regular power to inverter power. So, and this is the remote which runs down that same hole underneath the RV, comes up this wall, and then runs behind under the shower, behind the toilet, behind the electrical panel, in the floor, and then up. And this is uh, where the remote control is for the inverter. This is where I put it right on the bed. So at night, if we're watching TV, so all we have to do is reach down and turn it off. And uh, that turns it on. And obviously off, so. Yeah. So the purpose of the inverter is uh, when we have no power, no AC power, and the generator is off, we can plug everything in to the AC power plugs. And they'll run off the batteries. So obviously you have to worry about you know draining your batteries but this so we always we always can have power if we just turn on the inverter we put in a battery monitor right here we had to drill a hole here and underneath here is the shower is from here up so there's a big space under the floor here where all this stuff is at so it's all i did with the battery monitors i ran the wires through the floor through a hole in the floor there and they just the batteries are right under here so the the monitor's all hooked up to the batteries here and it monitors the battery. In this cabinet, this used to be the size of the cabinet from here to here. Utilize some space. Back in here is the uh, water heater. Above the water heater I took and just made added another little nook back there. Just something more that we could um, just store stuff in. This panel used to come all the way straight through here and this this was just a cover on here with nothing. So we built this little cabinet in here. Just, I mean, it's, it's not much of anything, but it's just enough to hold some toilet paper. We built this little nook in here. This, this panel here, this, this back of this cabinet used to have a wall right here. It wasn't much storage at all. So what I did is I took that off and I went back in there and built it bigger and, and made this little nook back here. So all the plumbing for the sink is up here. But we still could we still could utilize all this storage space back there, so we made this cabinet a little bigger. Thor had this TV mounted to the wall, so you couldn't move it. It was just the time you use these curtains, you'd be fighting with the TV. And also, they had the electrical outlet for the TV it comes out through this cabinet, and it has a wire coming across here. And they just had the outlet box hanging there, uh, not mounted or anything like that. So all the electric for the TV and everything was just hanging there. Took the bracket off the TV and we we bought one that extends. And one thing is it, it even just mounting there, it's, it's already away from the window so we can use the curtains a lot. And then if we want, we can always change this and move it around. And as you can see, I completely got rid of that outlet that they had 
and I put it back in the cabinet. So all the wires go up into the cabinet. There's no loose wires or outlet boxes or anything just hanging there. It works as our TV, but it also doubles as our computer monitor. Underneath this bench, this bench had three big, huge seatbelt brackets in there, and that's all that was in there. So I took three of them out. I left one in if we needed a seatbelt for the seat, and left one in, and then I made a little table for the computer. Uh, there's a um, printer under there, which is not hooked up. If we need it, we have to pull it out. And we have the PlayStation here. All these wires for this, I ran them right through behind all this stuff. There's a water heater in there. I had to get it behind the water heater. Uh, the stove and this drawer under there, I had to get it under there. Up this wall, behind the microwave, there's a, a space under this cabinet, about an inch and a half thick. A little nook, same thing on the side. So I ran it under there, up the side, through the hole, and through the TV. So all this is mounted to the TV. Everything's remote control. You know, obviously the PlayStation, you can turn that on and off with the controls for the PlayStation. To turn the computer on, I didn't know what to do about that. So to turn the computer on, we have this thing away. down here. It's called a bot. And what that does is... It has a phone app, and I just push the button on the phone app, and a little finger comes out and turns on the computer. So that's the only issue I couldn't figure out what to do with, and that solved that. We also put a couple fans in there to keep it cool. One's blown in, one's blown out, because the water heater's behind this cabinet. We insulate it all back there to make sure it stays cool in here. So if I wanted to plug a USB into the computer, so I wouldn't have to tear the whole bench apart. I put this little adapter on the front and just screwed it to the front. So if we ever need to plug in a USB to the computer, we just do it there. So everything is done uh, so I don't have to ever tear, take the seat apart to get in there anymore. It's all works with remotes and uh, stuff like that. We bought a tow dolly off of Craigslist. Uh, we got it for a pretty good price. but. There was a lot, quite a few things that were wrong with it. We bought it, which I knew before we bought it. It's an Acme tow dolly. They're actually made out of North Carolina. Um, tow, CarTowDolly.com is their website. I had to completely redo the brakes, which when I bought it, I figured, okay, go get some rotors, go get some pads and replace them. Piece of cake, easy job. Well, it didn't turn out that easy because it's a whole, the way they made it, it's a whole big unit. The rotors and the hubs and everything, it's all in one. So it's a whole big unit to replace them. So basically what I did is I just took my the old ones and had them turned. They were within specs. The tires, when we bought them, the man said they, they're fairly new tires. Well, as soon as we got on the road, they were actually starting to come apart. The treads and that were basically flying off, so we had to replace the tires. Uh, one of the welds was broken. It had a bad weld on it. Completely don't fully trust the whole car, the whole tow dolly thing, the way it works. Eventually, we're going to probably go ahead and set up for flat tow. But this is working great now. It's pulling the car. We're not having any problems with it or anything like that. So, um, so far, so good. But the car is always behind us. And the car is always there. Every time we look back, the car is there. So that's the good point. So, all right. How did you guys like it? We would like you to subscribe and hit the bell um, if you can it'd be great um, we uh, enjoy that you're here and uh, just thank you for coming along with us thank you for watching our videos bye bye